Hi there everyone, welcome back to my gardening channel and in this week's video I'm going to be showing you um, my preparation for the autumn winter garden as well as this I'll show you some flowers that are blooming in the garden at the moment and we will be harvesting some um, melons and an unusual type of cucumber. So I'll just sit back and relax for a few minutes and I'll show you around. It's raining and I'm so happy it hardly ever rains where I live here in Australia and it's got that nice constant rain that will soak in. I have some of my drains that are leaking <laughs> to get that fixed. There's the veggie garden it's looking a bit sad at the moment but I've got my plans well underway for the winter garden and I've started to sow all my seeds but I'm really enjoying today just reminds me of home. Good old Dublin. Wet and drizzly, but so green. Here's the start of my seeds. Um, I've only put flowers in so far. Um, so I've got, and some of them are edible flowers. I've got nasturtiums, over here calendula, and down here there's some borage. And look what happened to my wallflowers. I'm so annoyed with myself. I moved them out to the sun and half of them died pretty much it was just too hot for them but I still have quite a few here that I'll be able to um, use which is great. Angelus I find a lot of packets of seeds that you can buy are um, mixed so you've got your um, yellows and oranges and um, that's why I think it's great seed saving because you can save the colors that you want like I love the yellow calendula but it's really hard to buy packets of seeds with yellow here I'm going to try and grow some native Australian native flowers and I found this packet of seeds um, at Billy Buttons. They've got beautiful yellow round kind of ball shaped flowers and I'm going to give these a try and see if I can grow them. Um, I have heard that trying to grow Australian natives is quite difficult but you know what I'm willing to try. For the next few days the weather is cooling down a lot which I'm really excited about because I can finally come outside and clear and do some weeding like look how bad it's got I see all the grass growing among the uh, lavender that's what it's like all around my garden it's just been so hard it's been hot and humid um, and it's just been really difficult to keep on top of things so um, I think that's what I'm going to be doing the next few days. I'm going to sow um, seeds, I'm going to go around the garden and save some seeds and then I'm also going to do lots of weeding um, and planning for autumn and winter. The nasturtiums that I showed you that I've um, sown, I'm going to pop them in here. I know a lot of people just direct sow nasturtiums but I find in my experience I find it's much better to control if I am um, do them in little um, seed cells first and then transfer them and also um, before I pop them in I just want to weed all here and maybe give it another mulch and um, yeah that's what I think I'll do come down this way oh do you hear the birds aren't they beautiful oh this area is still looking good <laughs> from a distance and um, so colorful there's the archway down there into the chicken run and there's loads of nice gourds growing there but um, <clears throat> um, I do need to do a bit of deadheading here on all of the um, zinnias oh there's a plant there that just hasn't made it there um, and I'm going to try and save some seeds too um, I'll have to look that up on YouTube or a book or something how to save or what yeah how to go about saving the zinnia seeds because um, it's my first year growing them and they're quite new to me so I'll come down this way and um, there's some plants here that I'm actually um, not bothering deadheading so you deadhead to prolong the plant and um, to have new flowers like this one here this is a bright lights cosmos and I've decided I'm just gonna let it go to seed see there's so many here look that's it now you wouldn't take them off on a wet day like this you'd wait until they're nice and dry but um pretty much they're the seeds and um I'll do that all maybe um, when it dries off maybe tomorrow and I'll start picking off some of these and putting them in some brown paper bags and um 
this looks really nice but it's only an annual plant so just the last one season so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that out even though it seems a bit harsh now after I've collected the seeds and um, by the time I probably do that and um, some of those calendula little seedlings will be ready and I'll pop them in here because I, I just want to think ahead I don't want to come to the point where it's winter time and all this dies off and then there's nothing here so it does seem a bit harsh and it is difficult to still find a hard pulling plants out but I mean you have to do it so I'll replace these orange flowers with a different type of orange flower that are a bit more hardy the calendulas all along here and it will put on a nice show and um, hopefully it will be flowering quite well uh, by the end of autumn and then through winter um, it's a very hardy annual so it will survive the mild frosts that we get and it will look quite nice and then I'm thinking I might put some teepees here for a bit of height like what I have here with the tomato plants and the um, zinnias put some teepees in maybe grow some um, sweet peas something like that I think I think that will look quite nice oh I really love the rain Oh, I just close my eyes. It's like I'm in Ireland. <laughs> um, oh, you know, this area is just so overgrown. Look at all the grass. I kind of gave up on it a few weeks ago, um, but it should be all right. Oh, and guess what? Um, you know, my old mother Hubbard pumpkin, the one that I had to take off. Well, there's another one in here now. I am delighted. I almost pulled this um, plant out. Look, there's another one there. How good's that? It's great. Then over here and um, the gramophone is starting to take off. I did think that maybe I was only going to get one pumpkin on it, which is that one over there. You can see that large one there that will get up to 50 centimeters, hopefully. But I've found another couple that have set fruit and there's some of my gourds hanging off this trestle. And I did notice with the other gourds, um, got no idea is this a good or bad thing but the colour is starting to change it's kind of changing to um, oh, the light shining on it but an orangey yellow colour do you see that? I don't even know what this is that looks so cool it's like variegated I wonder if it will stay that way or turn all yellow okay, so this is the garden from a different angle um, look at this I've just let it go wild <laughs> I actually I just love it I love this look everything's just rambling everywhere I've got on the back tree over there magnolia over there you can't really see from here but I've got um, the little gem pumpkins um, just climbing up this vine here is the tromoncino I showed you this one last week how cool is that it's like a necklace I've got my bird feeder that my friend gave to me how lovely is that? Her husband made that for me. So lucky. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, and then on here are all some just self-seeded tomatoes. I might go and pick some of them off. I'm kind of a bit nervous picking them off because of the snakes. Um, and I have started to wear my boots all the time now. Um, but this is just like absolute jungle and I love it. And like to see what's underneath here is just so exciting like what I'll be able to find in here actually I did discover um, some nice things which I'll show you now the first one is this it's a crimson baby watermelon and I think it's ready and um, so you apparently you meant to check the base so it's a bit paler and if you knock on it um, it's meant to sound a certain way. Look, guys, I've got absolutely no idea, but to me, it looks kind of ready. So I'm going to pick this off and we'll open it up now and have a check. Oh, look at that. It's lovely, isn't it? Look at the um, the pattern on its outside. Um, it feels nice and heavy. Oh, I can't wait to open it up. So in here, I have some more um, rock melons, which I'm not sure what the name of this one is. But um, I have harvested a few already, some under and some over. But I feel like this one looks like the right size. So I'm going to cut this one off and we'll open this one up too. Actually, I don't know the name of it. So if anyone does, oh, please, I'd absolutely love if you could put it in the comments so I can. Um, oh, my goodness. I can't, there we go. 
Does that look familiar to anyone? It's an heirloom watermelon. Rock melon, sorry. An heirloom rock melon. We'll open this one up as well. And I have this other um, rock melon from the mixed pack. It's an heirloom one. Um, I don't know. I don't know if this is ready. Um, it feels still a bit firm. I mean, I'm only really comparing to buying them in the shops because I've never grown them before. But I think it feels a bit still a bit too firm. So I might leave it on until maybe next week. So before we'll cut these open, what I want to do is I want to go around to the front garden because I want to show you um, some more um, melons that I'm growing. One in particular I'm super excited about growing. I mean, the pictures look amazing. So we'll go around this way and we'll go around to the front garden and we'll have a look. And there's also a really unusual gherkin there as well that I think you might like to have a look at. Guys, this is where the sunflower fort used to be. Um, it's all gone now, but I've got great plans here for um, autumn and winter. I'm going to do a teepee with peas and it's going to look fantastic. And I do have a lot of sunflower heads here that I need to harvest, but I won't be doing it today because it's too wet. But I just thought you might be interested to see what it looks like now. I mean, this is the reality of gardening, isn't it? Like nothing lasts. The grass is overgrown. But my goodness, look at here. Do you see all of that green? They're all cosmos. And I reckon they'll be flowering very, very soon. Okay, so we'll go through the side gate. Oh, there's another passion fruit. Beautiful. I have the passion fruit growing up over here. And we'll go through here now. Okay, and around this way, there's my pile of mulch. <laughs> I haven't moved yet. And some more flower beds here. My front garden. I really need to fix up this area. Um, it needs a lot of work. But if we come around the side here, I have a couple of plants to show you. Down here I have a couple of vines and these are called um, tiger melons and I can't wait to see these. See them? There's one there and I have a few other fruit setting. There's one there as well and these got a lovely orange and yellow variegated skin on the outside. Um, so it'll be a little while but I'll be harvesting them soon I reckon um, and I did find a few more in there yesterday. But um, I'm pretty happy with how this one's growing and they're perfect as a single serve melon. Something else in here that is a bit unusual and you wouldn't really find in any, definitely not in any of the major supermarkets, are these things. These are called West Indian gherkins um, and they're so spiky and prickly. But um, I'll open one up now so you can have a look. A bit close up. Do you see the way it has those little spikes? Um, when you first touch them, they're a bit... They feel a bit funny, but you just give them a quick wipe like this and it takes them off. So they're a little bit prickly, but do you know what? For the flavour of them, they're well worth growing. I'll open this one up and you can see what it looks like inside. That's what they look like on the inside. Very similar to a cucumber and they taste pretty much like a standard cucumber. They're quite delicious, but of course nicer because they're homegrown. But um, yeah. I'd recommend these and there's quite a lot on the vines as well and um, I've already harvested maybe 20 or so and I'm pretty happy because there's a lot more here to pick off um, and um, I've actually given this to my kids for lunch as a little snack um, after I've rubbed off the spikes of course so I'm starting to get a lot of my autumn bulbs opening up these ones are called um, belladonnas lovely pale pink flowers um, and I've got a lot of these bulbs around the garden. Um, so what we'll do now is we'll go and open that um, watermelon and rock melon and have a taste and see what it looks like. Okay, so there they are opened up. Um, I think I've harvested them both a bit too early. Um, this one I think it needs to be a lot more pinky red here and you can still see bits of white. Um, and this one here I can feel it, it feels way too firm and um, I don't think it's developed enough yet. Uh, you know, it's my first year growing these, so if anyone's got any advice or tips on how to know when to harvest, I'd really appreciate you let me know. Um, I mean, I have looked into it before, but I just can't seem to get it right. It's so tricky. 
Um, they looked fine, they felt fine, but opening them up, this isn't good. But you know what, I'm still going to give it a try and see what they taste like. My goodness, it was absolutely delicious. So sweet and tasty and juicy. Um, oh my goodness, it's amazing. I'm just, I'm just so delighted. I'm so happy I grew these. That is so refreshing. Um, I'll definitely grow these again. So these are the Crimson Baby. Really, oh, I'd recommend them. And I mean, it didn't seem like too much trouble um, to grow. I was pretty happy with it. Pretty straightforward. Just keep the water up and look at them. Um, so the other one I found on the vine, I'll leave it on a bit longer. Um, but really nice. So I tried this heirloom rock melon that I don't know the name of um, and it's not ready. It's not edible yet. Um, I've picked it off way too early. It's still under ripe um, but um, I'll wait on. I'll be a bit more patient with the other ones on the vine and hopefully um, they'll taste a bit better. Thank you for watching this week's video. I hope you enjoyed me showing you around. Um, if you'd like to see some more regular updates of my garden, I do have an Instagram account called GG the Garden Girl, um, where I post on a more regular basis there. Um, but yeah, thanks again for watching, and I look forward to um, putting up a new video next week. But until then, happy gardening.